get out of my face, man. <laughs> well, sure, ideal day in a job than Matt being an apprentice, because a lot of the fans want to see this. They like to see what the apprentice likes to do in a day-to-day -day role of his job. Sit on what, what On what's wheat sheaf? Local. Local. Who is it? What's up? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, get out of here, now. <laughs> Guys, how we doing? Uh, just on going to our first project this morning. Take some stuff because I'm all sad. So just going to uh, whole city centre today. Working the uh, old court bank right directly in the centre near Queen's Gardens. Few guys that know Hull. So what we've been requested to do here, we've got uh, the commercial plant room has been decommissioned quite a while ago. I think maybe two or three years ago. So the full water to the building has been drained off. Uh, the gas has been turned off and the full heating system drained. So we need going to get in, in you know, we get the system filled up. Uh, do a gas test on the system which we'll go for on a commercial site how to test it on the gas rates and everything like that also get the water filled back up to the building fill the heat in and try to get everything working now they have requested a few additional bits on this one yeah uh, they want a new time clock put in so the customer's got more control so they don't have to go down the basement because directly in the basement downstairs we've got a uh, time clock so we can see just in the bank now and take it downstairs to the basement so we've got all ventilation here. Coming down into here, we're coming down. So, a little bit tight down here. So we've got our gas meter sat down there. I'm just gonna pop my tool bag down, have a quick little run through what's going on. So I've just got the gas service maintenance bagging for this one. And all my gas books and stuff. So what we've got, which is a bit of a beauty, we've got the control board right over there. So we can turn all the power back onto the building. Uh, I've got my field apprentice, he's upstairs now, just getting tired, uh, cold water main turned on. So, uh, looking at this uh, G10 meter, comes down, it's been isolated on the ECV, and they've actually, the old client has uh, taken the handle off, so I can get that recommissioned today, get that turned back on. So, we've got our uh, incoming gas main, our Anaconda regulator, the two test nipples on these, obviously, this is test the incoming pressure, but your local gas network provider would use this one. We wouldn't use this as gas engineers because this part of the meter from here is actually uh, the gas providers. Uh, what they'll use, should I say. So, looking at this, as we said earlier, gas main comes in, anaconda. This is the gas owner's responsibility, so the gas provider. From this point here, Gas meter is their responsibility. From this point, this is the customer's responsibility. So what we'll be doing today, we'll be doing a gas test from this test nipple here on the meter, which in turn will test all of this. So I think it's three quarter, or is it inch? It's inch going to inch and a quarter, and it just runs along there. It is labelled up, so because obviously we need to know that it's gas. It ideally wants to be painted in yellow orca paint, but it's indicated that it's gas, so we're good for that. And it just comes along back down all the way through back to the boiler in uh, local isolation valve again has been turned off so we'll reinstate that so we'll carry out strength test first what i'll do with this one is just do a let bar test record the calculations how i'm meant to do it we've got in here the ideal concord it's a cxa boiler neat little bits of kit these literally it's an atmospheric burner this so again just burn the bars underneath here as the demand on the boiler switch live will come in it'll do up the pilot will be lit electronic condition and it'll come on and just ignite and then just away she goes and she'll keep going until obviously our stat reaches temperature and it's quite a simple system it's not even got a low loss header or shunt or anything so we just take our flow is that the one that we turn actually sorry let's have a look at this look at the pump set so i think they've taken the half is that enough flow let's see which way that goes around uh, let's have a look. So that's my flow down off the boiler going through, returns back that way because it returns right, that's it there. So, what we've got coming off the boiler, we've got a flow coming off, it comes along, it comes through our actuator head, all the way. I think this is going to be one pipe system looking at it to be fair. And then the return just comes back, returns on the air, gun air, what pump is this, a 4120, and it just comes back literally and goes back to the boiler. So, it's a very simple system. We'll uh, get this all tested now and keep it up to date. Is it heavy? You can just do that. What is it, the old cast iron boiler? 
Then I took it up then have they because that's the old existing one that I know. On the, sometimes on the rope seal but it's not been disconnected so it's all safe but I don't that's why they've done that and not took it up. Ah uh, yeah so it's I don't know what boiler it's been now. You had the flow return come up there. It's not like gas one. Oh there it is yeah that's the old boiler. So we just left it down here like that. Literally. God knows what it is, atmospheric burner, it's like a I suppose it's just like a concord. So it's been a Inverted. atmospheric gas fire boiler on air and freight. Date of manufacture, I haven't got one there. Don't have one. Manufactured by Bon Giornani Viganoli Italy. Italian, I like it. So you can see this is better, this one here. So this would have been the front of the boiler, there, literally, and this is our heat jacket with the heat exchangers. So this one's been a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight section heat exchanger. So, and all that happens is, you can see down inside there, the gas, so the burner bars literally will just sit at the bottom here. And what happens is as the ignition comes to the boiler, so as we get a demand, the burner bars would get gas injected into them, and just for atmospheric when they're ignited, oxygen gets pulled into the bottom of the burner, just ignites the flame and the flame gets pulled up through the heat exchanger, which, if I can see that, look through there. So the flames, they won't actually go through that high to be fair, but they'll hit them and then it'll just radiate the heat, transfer the heat from the air, heat exchanger, should I say, to the hot waterways and then it would have been that these would have been the flowways on the top of the boiler. So you can see straight down there, I'm going to push my torch underneath like that. See, but slightly, but the heat would just come from up here. This would have all been cased off, and then this has been like the flow hood, and the flow ideally would have come out like on a four inch flow here, then up for the poppy. But so I've just popped outside for a bit of fresh air because uh, it's probably in that plant room. But you can see it's in hole now. Is he the number one apprentice again, Matty? I mean, get out of my face, man. <laughs> Let's see so we're just uh, back in the building. I've just Matty just shouted down to me. Water coming through where the tanks are, so we should go upstairs and investigate. They are the old galvanised tanks in here as well, so we'll just pop another look. Let's get him up, walk it and dry that off, but he's already been up, so that looks like it's been an old expansion capped off. That's my core main group. I've traced that back from downstairs. I've got my heating supplies there, so I've got my because uh, it's an open vented heating system, same principles in a domestic property, uh, 28 mil expansion, 22 mil coal feed. So you can see here, there is my old, I mean that must have been in from day one by the looks of it. We've even got the uh, three quarter stop tap, the head's been snapped on that, so and on there. So what most we do is we've turned the water off to the building now, but maybe look to cut a new valve in here. Let's get rid of pipes because the issue is you can see. We've got leaking tank there, so the feed and expansion tank looks well and intact, but galvanise over the years, they start rotting, and this one here you can see underneath is totally, it's just pitted away, so you can see just all these little holes there, same with that one there, I don't want to start poking it because it's uh, got a bit of water, I'm just going to get this drained off now. Just trying to establish what goes on with this though, because we've got a 22mm feed coming down, and the only hot water in the building is a Santon, uh, it's just a Santon open vented water heater, but it doesn't require an open vent to the tank going up here because by the looks of it, they've used this tank to feed the toilets. Back in the olden days, on large uh, properties like this, <coughs> back in the properties like this, they used to feed all the toilets off the tank coals. Reason being was that obviously just water regulations and uh, cost contamination of coal mains with your toilet supplies and stuff. So the usually feed, which is the big tank, I call the water storage tank, that would feed all the toilets in your hot water cylinder or anything like that. The little one would do uh, the feed expansion for the heating system. But what I think I propose to do, we'll kind of look at putting a new tank in here. But to be fair, for the amount of toilets it's feeding, maybe just look at literally cutting the tank out altogether. Leave the heat system one in, but I'd cut that one out altogether and uh, just literally pipe the cold main straight through to the tank cold main there and get rid of the tank. I, I just think it's not even needed, no, it's absolutely relevant. And most probably push as well to state to the client that we might get rid of the converter to a sealed system. We could do that up here, put a thin lump up here, and an expansion. Well, we're going to get the all this mops up now, try to find some mops in the building there, get it sorted out. Right, 
Yeah. Just while we're in here, look at this room. Looks like it must have been the old bank manager's uh, main office. The panelling's lovely. What do you think of that? I mean, get out of my face, man. <laughs> People like this look now, don't they? So I've shown it in my living room for the wife. It was a nightmare, but it's done now. But it looks absolutely amazing. And there's a the view there, Queen's Gardens there in Hull. The old police building used to be over there. Uh, but they're converted to flats now. That's fair than distance over that way. I think that's something to do with Hull City Council, Wilson Centre. We've got the BBC building over there. Over on Centre. That's about the biggest Hull gets. Matt? Yep. You got anything you want to say about Hull? I can't come through. No. You got anything you want to say about Hull? Not really, mate, no. No comment. Apprentice is there, uh, gets a bit camera shy sometimes, doesn't he? But just want everyone to take him to know that number one apprentice in the company. We've come to the client saying that the water's too scalding hot, it's getting miles too hot. So I've just written this on here now because when I've turned up, I've had, actually had the immersion on 24 7. So I've just stated that I need to leave this turned off because the immersion on this point here, which goes to the electrical element inside there, is only for a backup if the hot water boiler hot water boiler fails around the coil on here. On this system we've got a gravity fed heating, hot water system should I say, gravity hot water pumped heating, so it's a very old school system. Uh, the customer has had been having a fiddle with this, so by the looks of it, that is just spinning around all the way, so I'm pushed to think that that's maybe potentially damaged, but we're gonna get this whipped off, just see what's going on inside. I think this potentially might want replacing, uh, and then just inform them, we've written on there like I say, leave off, it's just a hot water backup supply, so we'll get in the way of taking this apart. Uh, so we're just, uh, we're just leaving the property now, we're going to pop to suppliers now to go pick up a cylinder stat and come back and get it put back on the uh, cylinder. We do use a car in the van stock but I've used one this week or another project, or another job should I say, so I've not replenished the van stock yet, just being busy. So I'll pick a couple up now, keep one in the van and uh, we'll see you soon. So just back from the suppliers now, me and Matty, I won't put them on picture but it's just getting the uh, cylinder stat all ready to go. Get them on picture, camera, do you not like being on camera here? Yeah. I mean, get out of my face man. <laughs> so I've got the new cylinder stat installed now. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it a little click if you listen. Perfect, cheers Matt. So I've got this set up now, what I'll do is I'll set the cylinder stat up to 60 degrees for the client. So it's uh, happened using it because before it was set on maximum it snapped so it wouldn't work. And then also had the immersion on 24 7 there going back earlier on. So we've got this tested now. Again, as I was saying before, this is a gravity hot water system. So the way it works is turn the cylinder stat on now. The boiler will kick in. It doesn't work on a pump or anything. Just gravitates hot water up through the main flow through my coil, which comes through the cylinder. So it'll come up that pipe, back round, go all the way through the coil, then back out the bottom there, back to the boiler. And it literally just works because it's an ideal classic, a cast iron heat exchanger. It can retain the heat and just get the rest of it pushed away just through natural convection. As for the heating, the heating is on a pump. There's four pipes on top of the RDL Air Classic, so two sides used for the hot water, the two sides used for the air, did it, did it, heating on the pump circuit. So we've turned up to this site now, uh, what's happened is the tradesmen have uh, snapped the actual stop tap head. They tried putting a screw through there to get it to work but it's not going to work. So this stop tap is live and this is open ended here so I'm going to cut this bit off now and get rid of this because this isn't needed. So I can't isolate the stop tap outside, reason being is it's an ongoing site and they've got piles of bricks and stuff over the stop tap where the existing one is. So what we're going to use is this handy little bit of kit, squeeze off tool, and what happens is, you put it over your pipe like that, push that back and just wind the clamp down, it'll compress the alkaphene so no water will come up. So I'll apply this now. Again, uh, I think a lot of utility companies work underground stuff out, like use these uh, tools. They're about 40 quid from tool station, and they're, they're really, really handy bit of kit to keep on the van. So you compress it all the way down, now we know that's how you say I can disconnect this stop tap. I have used these as well, a lot of people say they don't like doing it, but I use these on plastic, push with pipe 15mm, 10mm, especially 10mm. 
10 mil radiator valves because uh, if you're first fixing a lot on your building stuff, 10 mil it works really, really well. It just compresses it, you don't have to turn the full system. So you can see now, I've got my clamp on. Quite a bit of water there. So I can just shut it off like that. So I'm going to get this stripped down, cut it down. So that end is live now, again, like I showed you. We're just going to leave it like that. Let's try to get the money shots. Are we on that? This don't charge while filming. Don't it? No. Because it was charging, now it's not filming. It's not charging. Yeah, but it's still not charging. It's it, still on. Yeah, come on. Did it go off last time? No, it didn't go off. It's fine. It's, it's still charging. It's working. So after the debate about the GoPro charging, because my just don't have a clue. No, it's not number one. It's like, man, you okay? Say it. Say your number one. It's not charging. Oh, yeah. So we've put the uh, back nut on now with the olive. What I'm going to do, we've got the brass adapter, 22mm, 25mm. Get the Laco slick tight. Olive on there like that. Plenty of paste, don't be shy, give it a whirl, slap it on. And just like a standard compression fitting, tighten this up. Make sure nice and tight because they are on plastic. So, so now that's on there, here's what Matthew the Penix made earlier. The solid 22 mil end feed fitting. I'm going to cut this down a little bit. Again, these bits of kit, working on stuff live, I've done that wrong. Working on stuff live, it's really handy. So, I'm going to get my stop tap put on here ready. I'll tighten that up now. What's your favourite plumbing job, Matt? Matt, why are you speaking? Come on, Dad. Oh, God. Let's charge for it then. Pre made up now. Uh, I've paced all up on that side. I'm drop this into here into the fitting. I'll get this tightened up as well. So I'll make sure this is turned off. You can see now I'm going to release the pressure, so I'll disconnect this. Imagine if it popped off now. Why don't you speak, Matt? I'm struggling here. Take it off. Just always need to make sure I bring the camera a bit closer. When you've squeezed off, you can see there, it actually compresses the alcohol in there. That's all we tend to do with it is. It doesn't damage it, it's a rigid pipe, just literally give it a squeeze just to make it completely cylindrical again, if that's the right word to use. That's good to go. I'll test the stop tap now. Water's been left on for the full project. Yeah. So it's been a busy one today, hasn't it, Matty? Very busy. We've really got a lot done, to be fair. We were, what we had done, we went to that commercial plant on this morning, couldn't get that done. Matt was a bit annoyed because you wanted to get that going, didn't you? Yeah, I wouldn't mind it. And then uh, we've had to go to, where do we go after that? Oh, quote the bathroom. Let's go look at the bathroom that we've been awarded. It was just a second visit, pre site air visit before we actually come into work just to make sure everything's put in place. And then we've been here now. We've had Matty on the camera holding you, it. You better cut this out. So, yeah, we've been did the bathroom and then uh, me and Matty been on the camera today. You better pack that in now, mate. <laughs> so, me and Matty today. <laughs> Look.